in the woods Morning guys, Dave Canterbury of the Pathfinder School. Back to you with another Journal of the Yurt. We're back in the yurt right now. Um, this is where my good forging setup is and I've got to make a few accoutrements to go with my flintlock musket and my flintlock pistol today. So I'm gonna use my forge to do that with or my makeshift forging station to do that. And we'll walk through that real quick. But um, there's a, about three implements that I really need to maintain my flintlock pistol and my flintlock musket well. One of them is called a pan brush, the other one is called a vent pick or a touch hole pick, and the other one is called a turn screw. And a turn screw is just a screwdriver. But what you have to realize is that on most of the older muskets and things like that, the screw slot is very, very thin. It's a lot different than the screw slots are today and a multi-tool won't get in there. A wide screwdriver bit multi-tool won't get in there, so you either have to modify your multi-tool or make something more traditional, which was called a turn screw. And we're gonna make one of those today. We're gonna make a pan brush, which basically was used to brush any excess powder and residue out of your pan, and then a touch hole pick, which was made for cleaning out that touch hole where the powder ignites and goes through into the barrel. There's a hole through the barrel right there and that's called the touch hole or the vent hole. And we're going to clean that out with something every so often because it gets corrosion built up inside of it between cleaning. So we're gonna take care of that today as well. So those three tools we're gonna make today. And for the most part, we're gonna use the forge to make those tools. Now the first thing we're gonna do that we don't need to forge for while it's warming up or the stove while it's warming up is we're gonna make a tool called a pan brush. And basically I've taken a bone here and I've cut a section out of it so that now it is hollow on both ends. And that's what I'm gonna to use to make my pan brush. And I've got some deer hair sitting here and I've got some pine pitch and I've got a leather thong right here that we're gonna to use to connect the pan brush on one side and basically the vent pick or the touch hole pick on the other side. And that'll give us a way to hang this off our shooting bag at the ready for us to use when we need it. So stay with me guys, got a couple projects going on today, I hope you enjoy them. Okay, so for the first part of this project, we're going to make a pan brush. And what I've done is I've taken a piece of bone here, that's hollow on both ends, and I cut that off of a bone here. I just cut it out of the middle. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed these two ends of just a piece of bank line that I've split down into finer fibers. I'm going to feed those through this bone at the widest point, which I believe is right there. And I'm going to leave that loop out here. Then I'm going to grab myself a bundle of deer hair right here. And I would imagine that horse hair was probably preferred for this. But because I've got deer hair and I'm making my own, I'm going to use deer hair. And now the object is to pull this through partially to create a brush. So I'll put this put some leverage on this and try to bend this over and pull it through you can see how it's starting to turn over it takes quite a bit of force to pull that up in there and if it won't pull up in there then you probably got too much hair to begin with but I want this thing to be nice and thick. If I could just get it to snug up inside there, and I may have to grab it with a pair of pliers to make that happen. <clears throat> Slipping a little bit, but now it's up in there where I wanted it. Okay, now I'll just remove the longer hairs off of it and I've got myself a brush and I can sit here and trim this up to where it's even and it'll be fine for a pan brush. Now the next thing is I want to glue this in there. So I'm going to trim this off and then I will glue a portion of this leather thong down inside there with pine pitch that I've got heating up right over here on the stove. Okay. Stay with me, guys. 
Okay guys, so I trimmed those tabs off and I just kind of pulled them off to one side inside here. And now I'm going to take this leather thong that I've got and I'm going to trim it with my knife so it's got a nice long point on it. Just a little bit, just like that, so it's got a point. And I'm going to dip that whole thing over here in my pine pitch. And I'm going to shove it down inside this hole by twisting it in. As far as I can get it down there before the pine pitch starts to dry. Just like that. Okay. Now, once that pitch dries, that'll be glued in there, and I can trim this pan brush up a little bit. And that'll be half of the equation on the pan brush and vent pick. Okay, so now I'm just going to get myself a little stick here and just dip it in this resin and just go all the way around the outside of this and make sure that I've got a good hold on this leather thong. Now I'll let that dry. Okay. That'd make a really good fishing lure too by the way if you had bank line strung through there with a loop on the end of it for a leader. You could shove a hook right through that piece of bone right there. You could drop a hook through there and you'd have that deer tail fly on the end of there. You could paint this thing any way you wanted to. And that would make a killer fishing lure. You could even melt some lead and put inside there if you wanted to to make it heavy so you could make a jig out of it. Bomber way to make a fishing lure, easy way to make a pan brush. Okay, we've got a couple pieces of metal cut here. One here and one here. That are the right diameter for our turn screw and for our vent hole pick. Now it's a matter of heating them up to start drawing them out to what we want. Okay, now we're going to try to start drawing out our turn screw blade here. This is basically going to be a wide flat screwdriver blade. Is all this is. So right now we're just trying to draw it down thin. We'll get the screwdriver right and then we'll mess with the rest of it. And again, we'll take a file of this thing for several with too. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're just going to file this thing down to a good long point that we're looking for here before we do anything else with it. 
almost like an awl. If you make your vent pick right, it could probably be used for an awl as well to make it more multifunctional. kind of getting some real fine control here on the edge on the end of this thing on the point now what we have to make sure of is remember this thing's meant to go down inside this touch hole so we've got to make sure that it goes into the touch hole and we need to kind of see how far it goes into the touch hole. Looks to me like it's going at least an eighth of an inch or more. So I'm sure it's reaching through that barrel thickness and that's what's important. And then because it's got a little bit of a all to it, it's going to ream a little bit too. So I'll have to harden that up a little bit to make it a reamer. But that looks pretty good. All right, back to our turn screw here. As soon as we get our blade drawn out, we're going to be doing the same thing with that. We're going to be putting a file to it to get what we want. And we're real close right now. Gonna let that cool down for a few minutes and we'll get back on that now let's look at our little vent pick here again what I really want to do with this now is just flatten out one side of it draw it out and turn it over curl on there hold it back on itself a little bit just like that okay now we're going to heat this whole thing up and put another turn in it back the other direction there okay let's drop him in the sand for a minute get him cooled down well, I've been sitting here I just come up with an idea so let me uh, get this thing bent the way I want it real quick here I almost got it there Let's take this thing and cool this down in the sand for a minute. Make it soft and pliable.
Get our pistola back over here. Okay. Okay. Not quite thin enough yet. Okay. Because we got work to do. No problem. Okay. Thinning out quite a bit. Now let's see what we got. Fitting these lock screws. That's the important part. Oh yeah. If it'll fit in them, it'll fit the rest. Okay. Good. Now, let's take this thing and shave it just a little bit on the top. Just like that. Get it back in the fire. Alright guys, we have a turn screw, we have a pan brush, and we have a vent pick. Those three items, we can do a whole lot to maintain and keep our flint locks firing. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this uh, journal of the yurt. I had to come in here and use the oven. But uh, now, you know, I have the ability now where I couldn't before to actually take my lock apart on my gun to do maintenance. And this screwdriver fits perfect. It works perfect. I'm really happy with that. I wasn't able to unscrew these before without going out and buying a special screwdriver. So now I've made one myself. So the next video that we do, we'll take this pistol apart. We'll clean it up. And uh, maybe we'll fire it for you as well. I appreciate you guys joining me for this Journal of the Yurt. As usual, I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I appreciate everything that you do for my family and for my school. I'll be back with another video just as soon as I can.